What's up, Christ Chapel Dublin? This is your kids, Pastor Matt Tyler here, coming to you with our message for our kids and families today on Palm Sunday. I want to say happy Palm Sunday to you and your family during this uh, time of quarantine. I do want to give a shout out for next Sunday being Easter Sunday. Make sure to check out our Facebook page as well as our church website. There's plenty of resources um, that we've released for you and your families to enjoy during this time. Um, there's several edible recipes as well for things you can make with your families in the kitchen to highlight that um, to, to highlight next Sunday, that special day. Um, that to me and empty on that third day, and we just pray that you and your family enjoy that time together, fun and fellowship, and doing so. We just want to give you those things in advance so you can kind of prepare for what's ahead. So again, there's a free lessons and great curriculum. It's on our church website and Facebook page, so make sure to check that out. But today's message is really talking about a continuing that Christ 20 that Pastor Greg is doing as well on our YouTube channel, but putting God first. And what that means, um, I kind of put a, a kid's twist on it. We're talking about being salty with God in your heart. Now, you know, kids nowadays say being salty is kind of a, kind of a bad, bad thing of being mad at someone. But being salty, I'm referring to the salt of the earth in a good way. So, but I have below me, I have a jar of water, and I have an egg that I'm going to put in that jar of water, okay? Now, eggs, if you have a normal egg, it will sink to the bottom. And today's message, we're going to talk about how salt can be used and what salt means, how it can be used to make this egg float. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's message, but we're going to really specifically focus on Elijah, the prophet. Now, a little side note for our kids. If you don't know who Elijah was, I'm going to read you about kind of a background. I'll read you the scripture for today. So Elijah was a prophet. He spoke for God, and he loved and obeyed God. He was not afraid of evil King Ahab. He was not afraid of Ahab's wicked wife, Jezebel. God gave Elijah great power, and Elijah could do wonderful things for God. So during this time, there's a time of drought that we're going to talk about today in the um, book of Kings. And during this time of drought, Elijah really depends on God for his guidance and his direction. And during this time right now, we're almost in a drought of our own, of not really just being in a drought, but we're almost kind of trapped inside of our homes and can't escape and kind of wondering what's going on outside of our walls. And so we're kind of in that same drought area that Elijah is currently in. So I'm going to show you, we're talking about how to relate to him today. So, again, it's in, it's in the book of Kings, and in chapter 17, verses 1 through 15, I'm going to read it for us. It said, Elijah was from Tishbe in the land of Gilead. He said to Ahab, I serve the Lord. He is the God of Israel. You can be sure that he lives. And you, can, and you can be just as sure that there won't be any dew or rain on the whole land. There won't be any during the next few years. It won't come until I say so. Then a message came from Elijah from the Lord. He said, leave this place. Go east and hide in Kirith Valley. It is east of the Jordan River. You will drink water from the brook. I have directed some ravens to supply you with food there. So Elijah did what the Lord had told him to do. He went to Kirith Valley. It was east of the Jordan River, and he stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, as he said they would. They also brought him bread and meat in the evening, and he continued to drink water from the brook every day. Sometime later, though, the brook dried up. It hadn't rained in the land for quite a while, as, they, as he prophesied. A message came to Elijah from the Lord. He said, Go right away to Zarephath in the region of Sidon. Stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So Elijah went to Zarephath. He came to, t came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called out to her. I'm going to go ahead just a little bit as I continue reading. He called out to her. So I'm going to place here. He called her and said, Would you please bring me a drink of water in a jar? I need a drink, please. She went to the, get the water, and when she did, he called out to her. Please also bring me a piece of bread. I don't have any bread, she replied, and that's just as sure as the Lord your God is alive. All I have is a small amount of flour in a jar and a little amount of olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home. I'll make one last meal for myself and my son. We'll eat it, and after that, we'll die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home. Do what you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me. Make it out of what you have and bring it to me. Then make some for yourself and your son. The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug will always have oil in it. You will have flour and oil until the day of the Lord sends rain on this land again. She went away and did what Elijah had told her to do. So Elijah had food every day. There was also food for the woman and her family. The jar of flour wasn't used up. The jug always had oil in it. And that's what the Lord had said would happen. He had spoken that message through Elijah the prophet. Now, in today's message, again, we're talking about in this time of um, a drought that we're currently in, you know, putting God first in this drought and what putting God first actually means. Now, like I said, like we do every Sunday, I have an acronym for us to help us remember the main points of today's message. And in doing so, I'm going to refer back to the egg and the jar. All right, right now, this is us. We're kind of, you know, we're sunk down. We're kind of 
feeling a little bit defeated and feeling overwhelmed because we can't play with our friends and go visit houses and play sports. We're having a very difficult time kind of adjusting to this new lifestyle. And so right now, we kind of thought we're sinking, we're underwater. But the salt I'm going to refer to today are moments where we can dive into God's Word and pray with Him and build a deeper connection with Him. So that's what I want to talk about. So in doing so, the F in putting God first, we're talking about being salty again. So being salty and filled with the Holy Spirit is being fresh out. So the woman in the story, the widow, was fresh out. She thought she was fresh out. So the whole point is when she thought she was fresh out, the Lord provided. And during this time when we feel like we're fresh out of energy and fresh out of passion and fresh out of love and fresh out of almost anything that we have, maybe finances, whether it be maybe fresh out of clothes or shoes, whatever we're fresh out of, God will provide during this time for us. That's the most important thing is he will always provide for us no matter what drought we're going through, no matter what circumstance we're facing, God will always provide. So let's continue. So as again, as I talk about each letter, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of salt. I'm talking about being salty with God. And it's in this little cup here. I'm going to add two spoonfuls of salt to that jar with the egg in it. All right, so I'm going to add two spoonfuls. So one, two. All right, so again, for each letter, we're going to add two spoonfuls of salt. Now I'm going to tell you why at the end. So every time we dive into one of these, we're diving deeper and deeper into God's Word and making a better connection with Him. So let's look at the eye. The eye is inwardly looking. So this time that we're stuck inside and we have all this free time on our hands after our school work, we're on our spring break next week, so happy spring break to most of you. But the most important thing during this time is a time of reflection. We can look at ourselves and think about how can we be better? How can we better have a deeper connection with God? How can we be, how can we be a better prayer? How can I be a better worshiper of Him? What can I do better? So as you reflect upon yourself, this is a time when you can do that. Whether it be a time of drought or being trapped, this is a time when you can reflect on your own life and think about the uh, not the worldly things, but the earthly, and I'm sorry, not the earthly things, but the godly things inside us. Now, so let's continue. As I said that, right here at the bottom, the R is refocus. And before we refocus, we're going to add two more spoonfuls of our salt to our jar here. So one, two. And there we'll see, you can tell the water is getting a little murky, if you will. So now, the R is to refocus. So during a drought or sense of entrapment, it allows us to refocus our lives. When we refocus, we're refocusing not on the earthly things, but of the christ field and godly things that we need to focus on. So as we focus on things, we're not focusing on those of the world, but of Christ. So make sure as you refocus this upcoming week and you kind of revamp yourself, what you want to do is think about God and putting Him first and how you can perform and endure a better connection with Him and what you need to do in order to make that better connection. Because sometimes it's up to us. It's not up to God. God's there. He's waiting on you to make that turn and make that decision to better your connection with Him. You have to make that choice on your own. Now let's continue. So again, next is saved. So after we were refocused, we're going to talk about saved. And there's one, two more. Now, Every time I add salt to this jar, again, remember, we're talking about that's maybe a prayer that we're saying. Maybe that's a time of worship that we're saying with our family or singing or by ourselves. That's a time of reading his word. That's a time of spending that time and that quality time with him and making that connection. So every time you add salt into your life, something is coming up. Something is happening that you're making that deeper connection with God. So let's look at the saved. Saved people feed people. And Pastor Ray is going to talk about this in his message as well. But we're talking about saved people feed people. Think about as saved Christians, it's our job to feed others. And that refers back to our mission statement for 2020, our vision statement we're going to talk about in just a second. And our 2020 vision statement talks about being a lamp for others, right? It's about being a lamp and what that means. Again, we'll talk about it in just a moment. But before we do, I'm going to add one more in here. There's one, one more set of two, two more. All right, and the last but not least is to trust. And this is a big one for a lot of people because some of us are afraid to truly trust God and lay it on the line for him. And we don't, we kind of are selfish in a way of thinking of the earthly ways of, you know, whether it be greed or whether it be wanting to do things selfishly in a selfish act of um, pleasure of some kind, wanting to do something, maybe you can want to win a game at all costs. Like we have to revamp our mindset and refocus, like we talked before, about what God wants and it's trusting him to provide for us. Again, the woman in the story was out. She was fresh out. She didn't think she had enough to feed Elijah. But God provided. So anytime you think you're out and you think you're at the end of the road, God will always provide for you. And that's the bottom line is we have to trust him. And it's hard sometimes to trust God, but you know that we have to. And I know that we have to. So the bottom line is to trust him because he will always provide for us no matter the circumstance. So I'm going to have my last two here. We're going to talk about our vision, vision statement. I'm going to stir this up a little bit as I'm referring to our vision statement here. Alright, now as that's 
turn it around. Let's talk about our vision statement for 2020. Now, when I get to our vision statement, I want to refer back, before we get there, refer back to our jar with our egg in it. Now, what does it mean to be salty with God? So I mentioned, you know, being salty, you know, is not really a bad thing. I'm talking about the salt of the earth and being, that's being salty with God. So there's a scripture in Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read to you. It's uh, actually 13 through 16, but I have 14 through 16 behind me. But it says, you are the salt of the earth. But suppose the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything. It will be thrown out. People will walk all over it. So I'm not sure about you, but I want to be salty. I don't want to be thrown out. So it's important that we're salty with God. We're just like fulfilled with him. So let's continue. In 14, which is behind me, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then give it light. It gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And, they will, and that will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. So let's go back to our mission statement or our vision statement for 2020. I'm sorry, I missed that part right there, but that was our second part of that scripture, I apologize. There's our lamp bringing light to the darkness. And this brings back to our statement for 2020, our vision. So check it out, lamp. So we focus on being a lamp and being salty with God. This is what I'm referring to. So loving others as Christ loves us. That's that L. A, always looking for the good. Again, situations like this, it's hard to look for the good, but we need to know, realize how blessed we are to be able to do what we're doing every single day. Being able to have that time with our families, that quality time, of focusing on time with them, but also refocusing on what's more important, and that is Christ. And refocusing on kind of our focus of you know revamping ourselves for Him and diving more into His Word and building that relationship with Him every day. And then M is making an effort to talk to people about Jesus. Now it's hard right now to do that where it's, we're living almost in a virtual world right now, but you can still do that. You can still text a friend. You can do make a TikTok video. You can you know send a Snapchat. You can do whatever you can to get a message out to your friends. Telling them about Jesus, especially with Easter Sunday coming up. You know, Palm Sunday is this Sunday, but next Sunday is Easter Sunday. It's a huge and important time that we can send that message out to others and spread the gospel of Jesus. And then last but not least, this is the big one during this time. We have all this time in our hands. We need to make sure we're praying consistently. As we pray, pray diligently and pray consistently because God will answer your prayers and he will provide for you as long as you come to him and ask. So that's our vision. Now, if you look at our egg now, our egg is no longer sinking. It is now floating. Because what's happened is, again, being salty, what's happened is the more salt you add to your life, God won't allow you to sink, right? God won't let you sink and stay in the bottom of the pond or the lake or the river, the stream, the ocean. He won't let you sit there, all right? God is going to make you rise above any occasion that you encounter. So I encourage you today to add salt into your life. And when you do, again, that salt being that, that time of God, that quality time, and as you do, you'll rise above any circumstance that you face. So remember that today. And I believe that's all I have. I'm going to close out in a word of prayer. So if you would just bow your head and close your eyes with me, and I'm going to close out in prayer. Lord God, we come today so humble and gracious again in your presence, God. And I'm, I'm praying for every boy and girl and family and um, adult and our sound of my voice, God, whether they be watching online, in a car, God, a living room, wherever they may be watching. I pray specifically for them um, to be salty, God, with you and just feel uh, your presence in their life, God. And I just pray that they would just use this quality time um, efficiently and effectively. And they would just dive into your word just deeper and deeper. They would dive into the relationship with you even deeper as well, God. They would just call out to you and lean on you. Guys, we need to lean on to you hard in this time. Um, it's to support us and just lean on and lean on you in this desperate time. We also pray, God, that for any of those that are in need, God, we just pray that you would just um, provide for them in a mighty and powerful way that we know you can. We pray for those that are lost. God, we pray there's time they would um, come to know you. They would just hear your word, just calling out to them, God. And I just continue to pray for those on the front lines. I bow in this every day. God, I pray for our medical personnel, um, those that are feeding our kids. God, anybody that's fighting this virus head on, God, and our, just, our prayer for our leadership, God, are making these huge decisions that are impacting all of the world. God, we just lift them up to you, God, and just pray to just guide them and their decisions, their actions. God, let them glorify you and all they do. And God, I just continue to pray the safety, health, and well-being of um, all my children in the, in the, at Christ Chapel, alone at the schools, God, and all of our community, and, and God, just all the ones in all the world. God, we just lift them up to you and just pray for um, everyone's safety, health, and well-being. God, we just love you so much and are so grateful particularly for this upcoming Sunday and what it means to each and every one of us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank y'all. I love y'all, and I hope you see you soon.